A little young, this is for you. The voice of college football breaking down the ACC against the Big Ten. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our aim. That's our goal. That's our mission. Please like the video, even if you don't agree with me. Share the videos on, on social media because if you enjoy the content, others will as well. And, of course, subscribe here at the Voice of College Football. Hit that bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live, as we did last week, and received this comment and question from Khalil Young on the live chat. He was asking about my evaluation of the ACC against the Big Ten, and we discussed it this particular year, over the past few years, and then Khalil asked about the last 20 years. And I said, Khalil, I'll get right on that. And I pretty much anticipated these findings, this conclusion. Here we go. National championships. They mean what they mean. They mean that one particular team was given the opportunity, based on their excellence during the regular season, to be placed in postseason play, either in the BCS era through 2013 or in the college football playoff, and they were able to beat one or two teams um, and uh, earn a national championship. So for the Big Ten, that's simply Ohio State in 2002 and 2014. For the ACC, that's two teams, Florida State in 2013, Clemson in 2016 and 18. So three national championships for the ACC, two for the Big Ten. National championship game appearances. Ohio State totaled five national championship game appearances. Three in the BCS era, 02, 06, 07. Two in the playoff era of 14 and 20. Florida State, two national championship game appearances, both in the BCS era of 2013. Clemson in 15, 16, 18, and 19. So we have six national championship game appearances for the ACC and five for the Big Ten. So we basically have two national powers in the ACC and one in the Big Ten in regards to being able to elevate all the way to the top of college football. And that was Florida State at the end of their run during the 90s and 2000, and then they picked it up with uh, Jameis Winston in particular in 2013 and 14, and then for, uh, uh, of course, Clemson, then picking that up in 2015. And since then, and for the Big Ten, that's been Ohio State pretty much throughout the entire uh, 20 years that we're covering right here. All right, let's get a little bit more in depth in regards to the depth and quality of the conference 1 through 14. We're not dealing with one or two teams. We're dealing with 14 schools. All right, when you look at the Associated Press Top 25 poll, the final poll, which is valid, not that it's perfect, but it's valid, uh, in ranking teams, of course, teams that finish with excellent records are going to be higher ranked than the teams that did not. All right. Over the course of the 21 seasons from 2000 through this past college football season, the Big Ten placed 83 teams in the final top 25 poll. The ACC placed 66 in the final top 25 poll. This is where the Big Ten separates from the ACC, and it's not even close. In the Associated Press top 10. So, you know, keep in mind that there's nothing special or magical or definitive about being the 25th ranked team in the country. That means you're a pretty good team. You probably went nine and four, possibly eight and five in a Power Five conference. But there could be five, six, seven, ten other teams that have similar track records that just didn't get placed in the top 25. But again, that's 83 for the Big Ten, and that's 66 for the ACC. But to take it a step further, let's look at the top 10 teams in America at the conclusion of each season, because that shows teams that have significantly separated themselves as being the top teams in America. They're they're not close to not being ranked. Over the course of these 21 seasons, the Big Ten had 41 teams in the final AP top 10 41 for the Big Ten, 17 for the ACC. And over the past three seasons, that lead for the Big Ten in ranked teams in the final poll is 15 to 6 over the past three seasons. If we look at major bowl games, so keep in mind, not a perfect system, not a perfect process. Uh, 
The elevation to New Year's Six and former BCS Bowl games had much to do with TV ratings and popularity. But at the same time, understand that you had to elevate to a certain level. There was never a team less than nine and three that received an at-large bid into a BCS Bowl game or a New Year's Six Bowl game. So you had to be one of the top 10 to 12 teams in the country. Uh, And so it does show us who the top teams are in the country. And how well did those teams play against similarly ranked teams? Well, for the ACC since 2000, they are 12 and 23 in major bowl games, either the New Year's Six or the former BCS bowl games. 12 and 23 for the ACC, 21 and 22 for the Big Ten. So the Big Ten played almost 500 football. Uh, The ACC lost about twice as many as they won. So a fairly significant spread there. Neither conference excelled on that stage. Again, the Big Ten at 21 and 22, basically 500 for the ACC at 12 and 23. So also keep in mind what this tells us with the Big Ten being selected to 43 of these type games and the ACC 35 is that more Big Ten teams excelled during the regular season and were chosen, whether fairly or unfairly, they had the opportunity to play in those elevated bowl games against excellent opponents. Therefore, the Big Ten was taking teams that finished second and third and fourth in the conference, and they were being elevated up into those games. And it's only logical that they would have a greater chance of losing those games because they had lesser seeded teams playing high seeds from other conferences where the ACC more often, especially up until the playoff era when Clemson would go in and play two games. So keep in mind how much Clemson waits into this major bowl record with all their playoff appearances for the ACC at 12 and 23. Okay. Head to head. This is a great, great determinant right here. Head to head. The ACC and the Big Ten played 91 times over the past 21 seasons, 91 games. The Big Ten won 56 head-to-head, and the ACC won 35, 56-35. I was lastly going to go, and I was going to run through every team in each conference and compile their record against ranked teams from other conferences. Follow me here. You don't count the games against ranked teams in their own conference because that's just a one-for-one proposition. Somebody wins the game, somebody loses the game. But each team, and therefore each conference, is record against ranked opponents outside the conference. But too exhaustive. If you can get me to 20,000 views, get me to 20,000 views on this video, and I will go through and I will tell you uh, and compile those numbers. Because number one, if you go by the ranking at kickoff, it's not necessarily valid, especially for games in September and early in the season. The ranking at the time of kickoff isn't necessarily valid. And therefore, to track the final ranking, you've got to look at the game and then track as to whether that team and where they finished ranked at the end of the season. And then you have to take games that uh, teams weren't ranked at the time of kickoff, and they may have finished ranked. So believe me, it's a mess, and it's too lengthy of a process. I did compile these numbers, though. Ohio State went 18-14 and against uh, ranked non-conference opponents from 2000 to 2020, and Clemson went 18-17. and Kalu Young, I hope you're enjoying this, and uh, this was a fun process. I enjoy compiling these type of numbers to compare the conferences. The ACC versus the Big Ten, your thoughts below. Right here at the Voice of College Football. Please like, share the videos on social media, and subscribe. Hit that bell for the notifications because we go live all the time. See you soon.